collaboration platform, um, which focuses mostly on content collaboration and group collaboration. Um, and so today I'll be going through the full system, uh, highlighting all of the different options. Um, where appropriate, I'll be um, I'll be providing some insight into some of the features that are coming up as well. Um, and yeah, I think we can get started. Um, so what you can see on the screen right now is is a demonstration uh, server. So this is basically this is basically the same as the um, as the Aperio tenant that you'll have have access to. And when I say Aperio tenant, um, it's interesting to realize that the OE is a multi-tenant system, which means that um, a single installation can support multiple institutions or universities at the same time. And so on our production environment, Aperio is one of those, but we've got uh, 30 other schools on there as well. Um, and that opens up some, some interesting possibilities, but I'll, I'll come back to that later. Um, so one thing that's interesting to note, one thing that is coming up in the Tendledo release, which hopefully is coming out this week, if not, will be after Christmas, is the is this landing page will become fully customizable. So if you if for your tenancy you want to sort of contextualize the tenancy and explain what it does for your particular institution or your particular organization, um, then you will be able to do this. It's actually a really cool feature. Um, I won't go too much into it, but it's something that's coming up in the next release. Um, so in order to show some of the the real functionality, I'll get started by uh, by actually signing in. And one quick note about signing in is um, is that OE out of the box comes with lots of integrations for single sign-on. Um, so it has integrations for uh, Shibboleth, but also the Access Management Federations, CAS, LDAP, uh, SAML, um, and, and many more. In this particular case for this demo server, uh, I'm just using a local account, but I think, I think the Aperio tenancy is set up with uh, Google Apps Authentication. Um, so you should just be able to use your um, your Aperio.org account to sign into that one. So when I sign into to the system, you are taken to what we call your personal uh, your personal space. Um, and before I really dive into this, because there's a lot going on here, I'll just point out a few um, a few small personal preference options in below your name. Um, so there's my picture, my profile, and my preferences. Um, so first of all, my picture is where you can. Um, where you can set a picture for yourself. This is very straightforward, but I would encourage everyone to actually uh, go ahead and do that. It just makes the system a lot nicer to use. So you just select the picture and select the the area that you want as your profile picture. That should be it. Um, so that's the first thing. Within my profile, there's a few things that you can do. You can you can set your email address, but you can also set your um, the visibility of your profile so you can make yourself public to the world. Um, but I'll, I'll come back to these permissions later. But if you want to change your visibility settings, and this is where you where you would do that. And then the last one is my preferences. Um, so you'll be able to change the language of the UI. We do have uh, quite a few translations available. Most of them are complete as well. Um, so it, it goes from French, German, Spanish, Chinese, Hindi, uh, Dutch, and so on. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit available. Um, and then the email notification preferences is important as well. So when when something um, important happens within the OE that's that's relevant to you, then um, then you might get an email notification. And here you can you can specify your your settings so you can either receive those notifications immediately. If you feel like you're receiving too many of them, you can change your preference to either a daily summary email or a weekly summary email. Uh, so this is where you would do that. And do let me know if there's any questions. Okay, so looking back at the at the personal space for those uh, for those that have have never seen a demo I've done in the past, um, the way in which I sort of think about the OE is this this golden triangle of uh, you've got users on one side, groups on the other side, and then content and discussions on the at the sort of third corner, and all of these different concepts can can be associated to each other, can interact with each other in a very flexible way. Um, so that means that so users can be members of groups, um, content and discussions can be shared with users, can be shared with groups, um, and it sort of works in all different directions. They all apply to themselves as well. So users can follow other users, groups can be members of groups, and content and discussions can be grouped into into what we call folders. Um, and then in the center of the triangle, you've got what we call the uh, activity 
in the system or the heartbeat of the system. That's the sort of the thing that are really going on, the, the collaboration that's really going on. Um, and so this personal space, which is, which is where as a user, you'll spend quite a bit of your time, uh, does reflect that golden triangle. So there's the activity, there's my library for content, there's my discussions for discussions, my groups for groups, and my network for the sort of user side of things. So I'll run through these uh, one by one. We'll come back to activity once we've actually done some things in the system and we'll be able to see it uh, pick up on what we've been doing. Um, so I'll get started on, on my library, which is the place where you can see um, all of the content that you've either created yourself or has been directly shared with you. Um, and OE definitely focuses heavily on content collaboration, so this is, this is an important place. And when I say content, that can actually mean a number of different things. That can be uh, files that are uploaded into the system. It can be links to external resources. It can be collaborative documents, documents that you can work on with multiple people at the same time. Although I'd, I'd like to, I prefer to call them uh, collaborative note-taking tools. Um, and then you can group those into folders as well. And we'll just go through these one by one. Um, so let's say, let's start off with a couple of files that I want to, I want to share with a different person. Um, so one of the things that's important about the OE is that it doesn't require you, it sort of allows collaboration to grow organically. So you don't have to like set up all of the groups beforehand. You can sort of let that grow organically. Uh, but of course it does support setting, setting all of the structure up beforehand as well. So this particular case, we'll just get started and we just want to share a few files with a different, a different person in the system and you, um, and you want to collaborate on those. Um, so you click upload, that's the, the black, a clip on the right hand side um, and then you can it supports all of the the sort of modern things that you would expect so let's just um, let's see what we have here let's take a nice picture and a PDF file and we can just drop them in there uh, alternatively you can just browse for uh, browse for files as well a um, couple of things that you can do here you can you can rename them you can give them a friendlier name here um, and you can take items out of this list. Um, this particular bit over here is quite important. It's something that comes back throughout the entire system. It's quite consistent uh, throughout the entire system. It's all about permissions. Um, and so, and this applies to all entities in the, in the system. So it applies to users, it applies to groups, it applies to content items, it applies to discussions and so on. So for each of those items, you'll have the uh, first of all, you'll have the visibility setting, and an item can either be completely public, in which case everyone, including Google, will be able to find it uh, and see it uh, and see the comments on them. Um, the second alternative is is this one, which is my institution only. So in this particular case, this demo tenancy, we're using the University of the Open Academic Environment. Um, when you're using this on the Aperio tenancy, this would say um, Aperio Foundation. Um, so in that case, you can limit it to the visibility of the item to just your organization, in which case only people that have signed in through your organization will be able to uh, see the item and interact with it. And then the third option is private, in, in which case no one will be able to see it except for the people and groups that you explicitly shared with. And this is where this comes in uh, at the bottom. So you can share any item with a set of users and or groups of people uh, at once. So in this particular case, I want to work with Diana. Uh, Diana comes up here um, and I can just select her. Um, let's say that there's someone at Cambridge University that I, that I want to share this with as well. Um, so I could just enter that person's name and it will show up here. Um, so this is, this is actually quite significant in, in, in a sense that um, because of the multi-tenancy, we're able to share with people from other um, from other universities or other institutions very in a sort of very seamless way. Um, currently, those people have to be on that installation. We are now working on a feature where you'll be, you'll just be able to enter any email address, and they'll be invited into uh, a guest tenancy. So, so you'll be able to invite new people into the system. That's something that will be coming up probably for the 11.0 release. Um, okay, so in this case. We want to make it private um, and share it with Diana and John from Cambridge. Um, then you do update, and you'll always get a uh, like a nice summary of what's what's about to happen. So it says that 
the file will be available in my library and it will be shared with Diana and John and will be private and only visible to the people and groups that I shared with. So this is, there's a lot going on here. It's quite a, it's quite a complex thing in nature. Um, but hopefully you'll see that we've tried to make this as straightforward as simple as possible. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll actually upload those. Okay. So oh, right now in the library, you can see that those items have been, um, been added into the list. You'll see that all of the items have got either the, the lock icon or the, the logged in icon or the public icon. So it gives you, it tries to give you indications of items visibility throughout the system. Uh, part of the reason for this is just because for many students, this will be the first system that they can actually do their, um, their professional work in a, in a, in a possibly more open context. So we want to give them hints and clues throughout the system. Um, okay. So if we, so one, one thing that's important to note is that I said there's different types of content. So there's the files, the links, the collaborative documents, but we all try to treat them in a very similar way. So they all have their own profile page. They all have their own uh, permissions. They all have their own visibility settings uh, they can all be commented on. Um, they all have a version history um, and so they can all be shared individually uh, and so on and so on. So if we, if you go to this image that we've uploaded, we'll go to what we call the, uh, the content profile page of, of this image. Um, and basically, it, this is a very simple page. You'll just be able to see a, a preview of the item. And for, e for different types of content, we, we always try to show the best possible preview um, for an image that's straightforward, of course. Um, and then, so these are the, these are the different sort of management actions that you can take with this because we've uploaded this, we, we can manage this as well. Um, so you can always download the file, which you just see, um, over here. Um, manage access is where you can sort of, um, manage who's, who has access to the item. Uh, so you'll see that, um, I shared this with Diana and John. They both have few access to it because I shared it with them. I could, for example, make John the manager here and then just save. Um, I can also at any point in time change the visibility of the item. I can make it more um, more vis visible to more people or visible to less people at any point in time. And then I can I can add more people to it as well. So let's see if we have someone um, or groups. So you can share with groups of people at, uh, at the same time as well. So maybe I'll add this and say they can people in that group can view the file as well and then I'll go ahead and I'll save that. So that's been updated now. So that's um, giving more or less people access to the file. Um, share is basically the same as what I've just done. You'll be able to enter people's names and or groups names um, and, and share them with them. Um, you can add an item to a folder that has to be an existing folder at this point in time. Um, either in your library or one of your, one of the libraries of the groups you're a member of. Then edit details. This is where you can sort of change some of its very basic metadata. And there's, there's, there'll be some more, uh, metadata further down the line, but currently you can change its title. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to write this. Um, and you can give it a description as well, which will be used for things like search. So I've updated that. Um, one thing you can do for files, uh, but basically all content items in the system, so including links and collaborative documents, is there's a version history for files. You can upload a, a new version. So let's say that we want to replace this with this particular image. You can just drag that in there and this new version of the file will become available. Of course, for an image, this is not very relevant, but if you want to do this for things like, um, things like Word files that you're iterating on or PDFs, then it does make a lot of sense. You can go back in time uh, at all, at any time. Um, and so, yeah, so in the revisions, you can see the different versions there were, um, and so that you can restore any old version at any point and you can download any version as well. And then the last one is delete. If you want to delete the item, um, this is where you do it. But of course, once it's gone, it's gone. If you accidentally delete something, we can actually bring it back. But um, yeah. Okay. So that's the the first type. This is an image. If I go back to um, to my library now, you'll see that 
both the image that we've uploaded and the PDF that we've uploaded have these thumbnail uh, thumbnails associated to them. So we've got something in the background going through everything that's being added to the system, including links and collaborative documents, and it'll generate a, a nice sort of thumbnail for it. It makes it a lot easier to to find stuff in the system uh, when you're trying to find something particular. And so we do this for um, all sorts of content, but including PDFs and Office documents, which has been really um, popular in a lot of our, our pilots and production usage. Um, so when you go to this PDF, you'll actually be able to see um, the document on the page as well, so there's no need to download it. Um, you can just look at it here. There's a couple of good things about this, so you can you can go through the pages, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can, if you want to read it full screen, you can do that as well, which is which is kind of nice for uh, if you're just trying to read through a document without being disrupted. Um, one thing that's important to note here as well is that this is the the actual text of the of the document is actually in here. So one of the features that we're finishing off now is an annotation feature where you'll be able to um, to select some text inside of the document and, and attach an annotation or a comment to it, um, which we're very much looking forward to, and we think we'll get a lot of good usage, especially for things like peer review scenarios and um, reviewing other people's documents and so on. Um, and then at the bottom, the sort of final thing for content previews, uh, for content profiles, is that you can add you can add comments, um, and these can be and you can reply to comments as well. So let's let's get started and leave a um, I prepared a few comments. Uh, let's leave a comment for um, for Diana, the person that I shared this with, um, and let's add, let's add this comment. Okay. So right now we're going to have a look at the at the activity feed as we've we've now done a few things. Um, so in here um, you'll be able to see everything that I've done uh, reflected. So you'll see that we've created these files. Um, we shared that file. We shared one of the files with the uh, with that group um, in the previous in the previous screen. Um, we've updated it, so we've uploaded a new version for it, and now you can see. Uh, well, we've updated this title, uploaded a new version, um, and we've commented on the item. Now, this is all of the stuff you've done, which is sort of somewhat useful in terms of being able to see that your stuff has actually happened. But I think this becomes more interesting when you look at it from Diana's point of view. So I'll open, um, I'll open a new browser and I'll sign in as Diana here. Okay. So right now we're we we signed in as Diana um, and we're having and she's able to see all of these things in the activity feed because you shared those things explicitly with her. Um, so the activity feed is basically is basically just a place where you can see all of the 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 things that have happened that are relevant to you. And this includes things that have happened to you personally or have happened through the groups that you're a member of. Um, so this is, the activity feed is the main interaction point for most people. This is where they get an idea of everything that's been going on, everything they need to respond to, and so on. It's how they keep up to date. So there's no need to check all of the individual contexts that you're, you're a member of. You'll just get a nice summary in your activity feed. And when we did some of the usability testing, this once this activity feed was added, the sort of dynamics of the system were changed completely. I mean, suddenly people knew what was going on, um, became a lot more engaging. It was a lot easier to keep track, uh, keep track of things. So this has so been a very successful thing. Um, yes, yeah, so she can see the same thing. She can see that those files have been created and been shared with her. The new version was uploaded, and that a comment was added to this uh, to this document. Um, Next to the activity feed, we also have something that's called notifications. And notifications are basically the activities that we consider to be especially important to you. So that's things like someone sharing something explicitly with you, with yourself, things like someone replying to a comment you've made, um, someone requesting to join a group you've managed, and those sorts of things you'll get a notification for. These are also, the notifications are also the things that generate email notifications. Um, so if we open this up, she will see that um, those files have been uh, created and shared with her um, and that Daryl has commented on that file. 
Um, so if we go to this PDF that was uploaded, even though it's private because it's been shared with me, I can actually uh, I can actually get access to it and I can see the comment that Daryl has made, um, and I can I can see the entire file. Um, so there's a few things that I could do here now in terms of commenting. So I could either um, I could either add a new top level comment as we call it, or I could reply specifically to what uh, Daryl has said. Um, and so if I do that, it'll show as a as a reply. If I go back to the activity feed now, um, you'll be able to see that. This is where you can see something that we call aggregation at work. So rather than generating two separate activities for Daryl's comment and one for Diana's comment, uh, we, we sort of try to aggregate them into one. It has a couple of advantages in that um, it reduces the total number of items in your activity feed, plus it makes it easier to um, get an overview of what's actually been going on. This is technically very, very complex, surprisingly complex, uh, but it seems to be seems to be working really well for people. So in this case, you can see Daryl's comment plus the reply that Diana has just made. Um, okay, any questions up until this point? We're roughly halfway. Yeah, there have been a couple of questions, Nico. One, oh, okay. uh, one from um, Susan. Um, is there a way to see the difference in versions in documents like Confluence does? Um, the versions. Does Confluence do it for like PDFs and Office files as well, or just the the Confluence pages? I don't know the answer to that question actually, because I don't okay. use well, it very deal. I mean, our 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 response would be that for um it does it for, for the pages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for 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 PDFs and. Um, Office documents and images, we we don't show the changes because I mean they're binary files, so it'd be quite difficult. Um, for collaborative documents, we can do that. So currently, we show the, and I'll come, I'll show this a little bit later. We we show the text for um, for each of the versions of the collaborative document. Um, one of the features we're currently working on is rather than just changing showing the text for each version, we'll show the the difference between the two versions, if that makes sense. So we'll have these lines have been added and these lines have been removed, that sort of thing, which I think is the same as Confluence. Yes, that's the that's very helpful when you get a notice that someone's changed something and don't have, you don't know what it was. Yeah. Right, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, I suffer from this problem as well. So, so this will probably not be a part of the 10.0 release, but I think it will be part of either 10.1 or 10.2, so before the next major release, though. Were there any other questions, Ian? I can have a look myself. Sorry, remembering to unmute. John Lewis asked a question about Big Blue Button integration, which I answered by saying that I'd seen some form of integration. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. where that is, however, at the moment. And so the people at the people at Big Blue Button have actually worked on an integration. I think that's in a sort of alpha state at the moment. Um, they presented at the at the Aperio conference as well. Um, and the way in which their integration works is that you can you can trigger a big blue button um, sort of how do you call them? A web conference from 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 within each group. Um, interestingly enough at the same time we've had a different commercial company called ZenLive or iEdit is the company and ZenLive is the product uh, that basically offers something very similar to this. Uh, they have also developed an integration that's a little bit more advanced, it's a little bit more production ready. Um, and it essentially has the same functionality, it has the screen sharing, it has the um, sort of webcam talking, it has the it has a whiteboard that you can draw on, uh, and those sorts of things. That's that's a lot closer to being to being ready for ready for production. Nico, actually, yeah, actually, I was yeah. more interested in, and this is something you can save um, for the end, perhaps, but just getting an update on uh, kind of the state of third-party integration process, you know, via widgets, um, LTI support, 
okay. you know, things like that. So as people are adopting OAE and they want to integrate various third party things into it, what's the kind of process for doing that and the kind of the state of the art of that? Okay. But so let's finish the functional walkthrough yeah. and then maybe come back and talk to that after. Okay, we'll come back to that one um, at, at the end of the demo. That's okay. Um, all right, so let's move on. So one thing I'll do now is um, I'll make these windows a little bit smaller, and you'll see that OE actually adjusts itself to – it's fully responsive. It adjusts itself to the space it has available. That also means that it works really well on, like, tablets, and uh, it works fairly well on mobile devices. It's just um, – it works really well on tablets. Um, so you'll see that it adjusts itself, uh, makes itself um, so it's fully responsive. Um, and so in this particular case, let's go back to um, to my library and maybe um, add a link as well. Um, so we'll create a, a link. And this can be basically any reference to, to an external, uh, external resource. Um, there are some that will do something special with, like YouTube links or Vimeo links. Um, and others will just treat in a very sort of standard way. So let's just add a link to the EPC. And don't know if they need this. Um, you can add multiple links uh, at once. And then again, this is the same as when you're you're uploading files. Um, so you can you can give it a give it a more readable title. Um, you can change its visibility settings if it's a link if it's like a link you don't really want to share with other people. Um, and you can share it explicitly with other people and uh, and or groups. So let's say in this case, I just want I want it to be limited to the organization uh, rather than be completely private. Then I could do that, um, and I'll go ahead and I'll I will actually do that. Um, so let me just and then one thing you'll be able to see here on the right is that because I've shared this with Diana, she gets an immediate update on the screen without having to refresh. This is something that we call push notifications. So when something happens in the system that that's relevant to you, you'll see, um, you'll get a notification, and if you're on the activity feed, the activity feed will update as well. Um, this has been surprisingly successful, surprisingly powerful, um, and it happens a lot more than, than I would have assumed in the beginning, um, that you actually see someone else doing something. It's just, it's just really cool, I think. Um, and it does seem, it gives you an idea of what other people are doing, so that's, that's helpful as well. Um, so let's go to, and because it was shared directly with Diana, she gets a notification uh, as well. And this is what it says. Okay, so let's go to the uh, the page for the, the link I added. Let's just make this a little bit bigger for now. Um, because this is not a special link, so it's not something like a YouTube link or a Vimeo link, or there's about 12 or 12, I think it's up to 15 now, uh, different types of links, different types of applications that will treat um, in a special way, and we'll, we'll be able to give a much better sort of preview for um, this particular case. It just shows the BBC. Again, the same options. You can manage their access. You can add it to a folder. Um, you can edit its metadata, which is a title and description, or you can delete it, um, and you can comment on it. Um, okay. Again, as I said, we treat this very, very similarly to, to other types of content. You can see that this has received a thumbnail as well. Um, and so on and so on. So it, it, you can, you can use it in a very similar way. And then the, the next thing I'll show is we'll create a, uh, what we call a collaborative document. This is what uh, Susan was referring to. Um, but I prefer to call it a, um, collaborative note taking tool. Um, call, give this a title. Again, the same permission options. Uh, let's say that I, I want to make this available to Diana and John. Um, and I will make it private for now. We don't want anyone else to be able to see our document yet. Um, so again, I'll, I'll do that. Um, takes me to the, to the document. And again, Diana is able to see an immediate update of this, of this happening. Um, so the collaborative documents are done through a, um, this hasn't been, yeah, through a integration with, with Etherpad. Uh, we have done some sort of some skinning and some other things to make it uh, to make it look as if it's more more part of the application. Um, and let's have Diana go to this as well. So 
Sorry, I'm not I'm not on the best of connections. Um, okay. And so basically, what this allows you to do is it just allows you to to work on the same document with multiple people at the same time. So if I make a change here, then Diana over here will be able to see it as well, and she'll be able to um, to change things and make changes to it, and so on and so on. Uh, there's a couple of interesting things in here in this editor. So there's some basic uh, formatting functionality, so you can make it. Um, Make text bold, italic, underlined. You can strike through. There's some um, some bullet point options. You can do um, indenting and see, yeah, outdenting. Um, you can, uh, oops, yeah, this isn't properly deployed. Um, one of the things that you can do is, yeah. So if you click this button, usually on the production environment, you'll be able to see the the author colors. So you'll be able to see. Um, what changes have been made by who. So you, these colors would show up in the document and you'd be able to see um, this color would be used for the changes that Diana had made and the other color would be used for the changes that Daryl has made. And then you can export this as a as a PDF for printing purposes, for example, as well, if you click that print button, um, which is not actually working here, but that's fine. Um, and you can do some basic styling as well, like you can give uh, certain lines, of, like a title, different title styles or, um, like a like a paragraph style, or, or there's a few there's a few different styles there. Um, and then again, you can you've got exactly the same options as with the uh, with the other documents. You can uh, manage who's got access to it. You can share it with people. There there is a read view read only view as well. So if I if I didn't want John to be able to make changes, you'd be able to make him a can you would make him can view. In which case, he would see the document, but he wouldn't be able to to change it. Um, one of the things we're working on will probably be part of the 10.1 or 10.2 release is the concept of a editor role so that um, you can you can give someone can edit rights, which basically means that they can make changes to the document, but they can't manage it, which means that they can't do the um, they can't decide who's got access to it. They can't delete it and so on. Um, so that's something that we're working on. Um, and then let's see. What else is relevant here? Okay, yeah, so the thing that Susan referred to was the um, revisions and, and the revision has been saved yet. Let's see. Yeah, anyway, so, so I think this is part of the, the demo server deployment, but usually every time some every time a significant change has been made by someone, a new version will be saved. Um, currently, it just shows the, the text of each of the versions when you go through the versions. As I said, we'll be changing this to a um, to showing the difference between uh, between the version you're looking at and the version before that. Um, and I think that covers most of the different content types. There is one more. Uh, which is uh, folders. So basically, when you um, so so these are all individual items now. And if you want to, if you wanted to group them into um, into a unit, um, as we call it, you could create a folder as well. So so let's say that I want to create a expose on the particle folder. And so folders basically just group group content items. And then folders are individual items in in themselves as well. So they have their own visibility, their own permissions. Um, they can be shared as a unit. Um, they can be commented on and so on. So it just has, has all of those things consistently as well. So let's say that we wanted to make this private, um, update this. So, so the, the empty folder, I've created an empty folder here. Um, again, I could upload directly into this. I could add links or documents into this. Um, and I've got the same options again, so I can manage who has access to it, which in this case is just myself. Um, I could share it so I could give Diana access as well. And maybe I want her to be able to, to manage the folder too. So I could do that. And then I could edit the metadata and I could delete the items. If at any point in time I wanted to add something to, um, to that folder, I could just um, select the items. So let's say that all of these we want to add to the folder. Uh, just click this, and then you can select folders from either your library or all of the libraries uh, for the groups you're a member of. Um, so these are the groups I'm a member of. But in this particular case, I wanted to I want to add it to the Higgs boson particle uh, folder. So I'll go ahead and I'll add that. Um, and then when I go to the folder, I should be able to see that these items have been added. 
uh, one of the things we'll add is like a, like a presentation view of this as well. So you can just go through the different items one by one um, and people can comment on this too. Okay, so I think that covers most of content. You can see there's, there's quite a bit there. There's quite a few different options, but it should all be very consistent. Um, it should hopefully all be fairly easy to use. If you, if you have any feedback whilst you use it, feel free to just um, either, I mean, send me a note or um, we've got other mechanisms as well, like a, uh, like a user voice uh, thing as well, where you can suggest IDs and so on. Okay, so that covers uh, content. I'll have to speed up a little bit here because we're running out of time. Um, so another thing on there is discussions. And so discussions are basically are basically just uh, discussions as in the comments you've seen so far, um, which you can you can invite people and or groups into. Um, so, it's basically it. so if I wanted to look at one of those discussions, you'll see that there's a discussion topic. Um, and again, so th this is a discussion I don't manage, in which case you get some different options. So you get an about, which tells you um, who created it, when it was created, and maybe when there's a description, it gives you that as well. You can have a look at, at who, who it's actually shared with. Um, and in this particular case, because it's a public discussion, I can share it first as well. Um, and so, yeah, so you can see the discussion topic, which is set by the person creating the, the discussion, but can be changed uh, later on. Um, and then you can see the different people that have contributed to this discussion. Um, so in this particular case, there's just one person that has had, said something and someone else has responded to it. And I could, as this is a public discussion, I am able to, um, to respond to this as well. Um, so I'm now contributing to this public discussion. Uh, Oops. Okay. okay, and this shows up in my activity stream now as well. So people, the people that manage this discussion or have contributed to this discussion, they'll get an activity for this as well, saying that someone else has, um, has said something. Okay, so that's discussions. Um, then we'll go into groups, and groups are, groups are sort of really, thinly present almost, but they're incredibly important once you start using the system at, um, in anger, when you, when you start using it at a larger scale. So groups are basically just um, lists of people. And you can use those lists of people to share items with, invite into discussions, um, and, and so on and so on. So every, every time you can use a, a person in the system, you'd be able to use a group as well. Um, groups can also be member members of groups. If you wanted to create a slightly more complex um, setup or hierarchy, then you would be able to do that. So if we, let's see, do I manage any of these groups? I do manage this one. No, I don't. Um, okay, so each group has a, a group space as well. And this group space isn't necessarily uh, a destination per se. It's not where you do the collaboration. That's more on the content and the discussion side but it's where you get a, a summary of everything that the group's been doing together. Um, so basically, um, so, so each group has its own activity feed where you can see, um, it's like your personal activity feed, but it's limited to the things that have happened um, with the group or inside of the group context, um, which is a really good way of getting a focused overview of uh, what, they, what a group of people has been doing. Um, each group has its own library as well. So these, this shows the things that have been um, created inside of the group context or have been uh, been shared directly with, with that group. Um, and then each group has got its the group folders as well for organizational purposes. Um, then each group has got discussions as well. So these are um, these are the discussions that the group is involved in. Uh, note that the content items and the discussions, they are not bound to this group specifically. They can show up they can be shared with multiple groups uh, at the same time, which means that it would actually show up in multiple, in those multiple groups uh, at the same time. So, so these things can all be reused across context. So they're not bound to specific context. And then there's the members of the group. This is basically just a list of people that every time I use a group to share an item with or to invite into a discussion, this is eventually the list of people that will, um, that will get, a, will get access to that item. Was there anyone that wanted to ask a question? Or... Okay, maybe not. I thought I heard something. Um, 
And yeah, and so you can, so if we go back and maybe set up a new group for the Higgs boson particle research group, um, made this members only. Again, same same options. You can make it public. You can make a public group. Uh, you can make a group that's limited to your institution. You can you can limit it to the members of that group only. So it's a private group. Um, there's a few join options as well. So you can make a private group or a, um, that can be joined by by people. So in order to be able to get access to it, they would have to explicitly uh, join it first. So the person um, managing the group would would know that um, that this person has access to that group now as well. So that those are all possibilities. Um, so if I create this, I can very easily add members to this. So if I wanted to add John Norman and Diana. And I could either add them as, as members or managers. If I add them as a manager, they'd be able to add okay. other members to the group or remove members from the group. So maybe in this case, I just want to make them members. Doing a process or adding your knowledge to just might go. It's about adding your I think we might be getting some background from Theresa. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay, and so as a manager of a group, I can give the group a picture, which again, we recommend just to be able to recognize your group more easily in the list. Um, you can manage the members and you can change some of the basic metadata, um, which includes the, the name of the group, the description for the group, and then the different join options. So this is anyone can join, in which case um, it'll show up. People will be able to find your group. They won't be able to see it, but if they join the group, they'll be able to uh, they'll become a member and they will be able to see it. Um, so especially for things like, um, yeah, like, I mean, groups where you want to know who, who's actually participating, uh, this could be, uh, this could be quite interesting. In this case, I'll, I'll leave it as is. Um, and then again, the same options I could, if I create something from this context, like a discussion or a link or a folder, or I upload a file from this context, it'll automatically be shared with the people in the group as well. Um, so if I wanted to, um, so it, it'll automatically tell me that this file will be added to my library and the library for the Higgs boson particle research group, which is the group we just created. And then in the change, um, in the change screen, I can adjust that. I can add it. I can add more people or more groups. So this is just a, a convenience thing mostly. And so one of the things that I can do is I can I could have made this PDF public, uh, but still add it to the private group, in which case people would be able to find the PDF, but not the group, if that makes sense. So that's where it becomes a little bit more complex. Uh, it's also more of an edge case, I think. Um, okay, and you, we should be able to see that this has been added to to the group's library, and the members of the group will get a will get a, an activity saying that this new file was added to the to the group library. Um, Okay, so I think we've covered most of it by now. Um, a few small notes. There's also a network feature, which basically um, allows you to to follow other people. Um, all that really does is that if if the person if the person you follow does something that you are able to that you have access to, so they, for example, they upload a public file or they um, they start a discussion with your organization, within your organization, then you get an activity for that in your activity feed. You don't get a notification for it and you don't get an email for it, um, but you just get an activity for it. And then you can you can also see the other people that are following you, um, which is for people like Stephen Hawking, where they don't want to get a, a request for everyone following them. Um, and the last thing is that, so within each... Um, Within a within a library or within the discussion list or within a groups list, you'll also, you'll always have the ability to search within that list. So if I just wanted to search for for a particular item, I'd get I'd get that item here. Um, there is also a global search feature, which is the one uh, at the top. You can get to this at any point in time. And what this basically does it is 
it searches through the entire system and it'll give you all of the results that you're able to see. So it won't return private results from other people, uh, but it will only return the things that you're able to see, um, which is quite a performance challenge to get right, but um, it does seem to be working well now. Um, so basically I see these three items. Um, I could limit this to give me only the people, in which case there's no one that matches that query. Um, or I could say, give me the people and the groups. Um, oh, and there's one group that apparently matches this. Um, so I could, I could refine this a little bit. Um, in a future release, this will probably be more around the um, 11 or 12 release. There'll be some more um, exploration features around this, uh, discovery features around this, where within your organization, you might be able to, we might make it easier to see which groups are available, which people are available. Is there anything that's interesting potentially to me? Um, so those sorts of things are currently in design phase. Um, will probably be um, somewhat fleshed out further in the uh, in one of the upcoming major releases. I think that fills our hour. Um, there were any? Um, I mean, I was sort of thinking, uh, John, that if we the question about external contribution might be best tackled on the email list so that other people can see it as well. Unless there's no other questions, at which point we, in which case we could do it now as well. Um, I'd like to have a tiny clarification on um, the my library. Okay. Did you say it that anything that had been shared with me would show up there? Um, anything that's been anything shared, that's. I only see those in the activity stream in the my library. I only see my own things. Right, so my library only contains the things that you've either created yourself, as you said, or have been shared directly with you as a person. Um, oh, not if, as a group. Not as a group. So I, if it's I if it's see. been shared with a group you're a member of, it will be in that group's library. But it will still show up in your activity feed. I sense. see. So I have to navigate to the various groups to see those things. Um, well, hopefully... Uh, the reason why you want to get to it is because you've you've got a notification about it. Um, if it's not, you can just use the global search feature, um, and it will that'll combine results from all of the groups that you're a member of. Okay, thank you. Well, if there were no other questions, then. We're just about on the hour. Uh, thanks ever so much, Nico, for uh, for taking us on that walk through OAE. Uh, I hope it was, I hope it was useful. If there's any follow up questions, um, so I think John's question I'll just tackle on the email list, um, and then if there's any other follow up questions, feel free to send an email. Um, I'll be happy to respond to it. Sounds great. Sure, and if you, if you want to review any of that, the session has been recorded. So uh, I will make that available, but not, not as a public share.